Well, hi there, and welcome to Bella's Vistas. Well, we started having some computer problems, and I thought it was time for us to upgrade to Windows 11. So I decided to pull apart our old desktop computer, clean it out, and put in a new used motherboard that I got from a friend of mine that would handle Windows 11. So I proceeded to tear the computer all apart. Now this video card in here, I paid a lot of money for this video card and I thought we were going to be able to keep using it. Unfortunately that wasn't the case, but if you stick with us you'll see. Now another problem we had was scanning photographs. There you can see the video card coming out. That's a huge video card and it was very expensive, but that was a few years back. So if you stick with us towards the end of the video, you see how we're scanning photographs using Windows 10 because Windows 11 won't let us scan properly anymore with our Epson scanner. Well, I got the video card out. The video card is out. So what else do I have to take out? So many. The first thing I have to do is pull out the motherboard. Disconnect all the wires, try and remember where everything goes. It's a long time since I did any computer builds. I used to do this quite regularly, just about every year I'd be upgrading my computer, but I haven't upgraded this one for a long time. All these licorice cables to pull out here. Wow. It's a lot easier pulling them out than it is hooking them up, too, I'll tell you. I haven't it's done this job. A lot in a of while. plugs. A new modular power supply. Actually, I was thinking about building a Ryzen computer system before I just did a minor upgrade. But I th saw that I was going to be spending three or four thousand dollars to get into Ryzen technologies. First I started with a new motherboard and processor for about $300 and then well I decided I had to put another video card in afterwards. There must be another screw in here somewhere. Darn if I can see it. There's one. There's the motherboard coming out. Pretty tiny, really, when you think about it inside that huge box. But we've had that uh, box for a long time. It had a much bigger computer in it before. Well, now this is the new motherboard that I'm putting in. Got 32. Uh, RAM, got the processor there, it's a faster processor and a better motherboard I'm told. I'm going to have to take this downstairs and blow it with the compressor, it's dirty. Well my supervisor showed up to make sure I'm doing a good job, she doesn't want me leaving any cat hair in the computer. This kitty was keeping an eye on everything for me, giving the computer a bit of a cat scan. Well, this is the old motherboard, so that's gone. Now, like I said, they go in a little harder than they come out, but I've lined up all the pins so that it's going to fit properly. <laughs> she wants to be in the video. She really likes being, having pictures taken and video shot. I miss ballast so much, but Miss Kitty really helps fill things in a bit for me. Bella was with us for 10 years. I miss her every day. So, let's get everything out of the way. This is 
Some of those cables are for accessory case fans, which probably aren't even necessary, but I like to make sure the computer stays nice and cool. Kitty, oh, you're such a good help, you are. Pull this out. The in and out panel on the back is always different whenever I change a motherboard, we have to change that. So, Next time I do a build, it's gonna be a water-cooled case. And it's going to have all the features. Yeah, just like that. So this. This is just sort of a stopgap to see how it'll work. Goes in here. It actually worked out really well in the end. Okay. So that's where all our sockets go in and out on the back. Now let's check. New motherboard is no bigger. I mean, it's it's not a big motherboard at all, and it's uh, just got the stock cooler with it, which is good enough. My friend that I got the board from said he already changed the thermal paste on it, and it's running quite cool, so I'm not worried about that at all. Man. It's taking me forever. Kitty's trying to help, but I think she's chewing the wires. I just came back from cleaning everything and adjusting the stays. Adjusted all the standouts. Now I gotta put it together. Come on out of there. Pull her oh, out. Don't you eat those wires. Okay, now the board has been blown off and cleaned with the compressor. Put it in. Put all the screws in. Fortunately, I didn't lose any screws there. Cat's very interested in everything that I do. It's important that you put the screws in the right place so the board doesn't get wobbly and cracked with traces or anything. It's always fun to get up in the morning and watch my videos on the computer and she sits in my lap. Now there's my old video card. I'm putting this one back in. At this point I figured it was going to be just great because I thought this was such a super video card, Nitro. Um, and I always think I just bought something like a year ago or six months ago, and it turns out it's more like five years ago or four years ago. I put the new computer together with my old video card, and it was just as slow as ever, so... I upgraded the video card. This is what I put in my office, a little Windows computer, Windows 11. This is the power supply for my old video card. You can see it's a 8-pin and a 6-pin. Yeah, I've got to hook my hard drives into there. So I better do that first before I put the video card in. Well, <clears throat> Miss Kitty was doing her best to help, but... <laughs> She's not an awful lot of help installing motherboards and stuff. I had a heck of a time there. I had to modify a connector, so it's all together now. We're just doing some updates. Updating the video driver now. That's going There's to take the a little video while. card. That's the new video card, the box from it anyway. I bought this so that I can use my old wireless keyboard and mouse with the desktop computer. There's the new Logitech mouse on the left and the old Logitech on the right. The new mouse uses a little dongle like this. It's just tiny. It works just perfectly. There's our new computer in a really old box. And that's the video card that we're using now. AMD Radeon RX 6600. And it's marginal for Lightroom, but it's, it's good enough for what we're doing right now. We're working with Olympus RAW files, and it's quite adequate, really. We went from several minutes to denoise an image to 12 seconds. There's the old Sapphire Nitro card. It was too slow. See, it uses a 6-pin and a... 8-pin connector. The new card uses only one 8-pin connector 
and it works just fine. The old video card was a much better build, I think, but the new one is half the weight and faster and uses less power, so I guess it was the right move to make. Now, before we upgraded this computer, this was our big problem, denoising a photograph it took a really long time, so here we go, we're going to get ready to start enhancing this one. We'll just see how long it takes now. It still takes a while, but it used to take minutes, now it takes seconds. So we can live with that for now. And there it is finished. We get a lot more detail and less grain and noise. So I guess it was a worthwhile update. Well, now I want to try scanning some transparencies. These are shots that I did a long time ago in Yellowstone Park. These are Kodachromes. Very excited about these. They seem pretty good too. So the main thing to do is to clear the dust off. Dust is the enemy, so I have to blow the dust off these transparencies. It's much easier a couple blow seconds the blowing the dust off and using the brush can save you hours of retouching later on. It's very important. I'm just checking the sharpness of these transparencies as well. The old Kodachromes, man, I just loved shooting Kodachrome. I loved the Leica with the 35 millimeter 1.4 lens and a roll of Kodachrome and I was happy. Wow. This little brush works really well to get the dust off of transparencies. You want to keep them clean, you don't want to scratch anything. Got to keep the flat bed clean too. It's a pretty handy workstation here really. Okay. I plan to scan an awful lot of work. Now then. All my old pictures I'm going to scan. Now we open up the Kitty scanner watching program. here. I tell her, you know, cat fur is not conducive to scanning, but she doesn't believe me. And then she'll take a bat and knock my loop across the room too. <laughs> she likes to be part of everything. Yeah, Yellowstone Park, what a time I had there. I've been back a couple more times there and got some more photographs. It takes about four minutes to scan at 6400 DPI, but doing tests we found out that 4800 DPI gave a better result than the 6400. But I've had really good success with this. When I was working for Hallmark, I did some scans from 4x5 ectochromes, and they said they were among the best they ever had. We brought our scans at 6400 DPI and 4800 DPI, into the other computer room and looked at them in Photoshop. And as I had expected, the 4800 DPI works better. It's like a non-interpolated resolution. The 6400 is, maybe that's just theoretical, but that's our best result. Well now, that's what we got from 35 millimeter Kodachromes. Man, I really loved shooting Kodachrome. But we can also scan negatives, and that's a good thing because, uh, like, I've got lots of Kodachromes to work on. But shots like this, this was shot on a negative. That's a 35 millimeter Leica negative that I shot way long, long time ago. I used to photograph these boats just about every day. Now, this shot here is Wreckhouse, 
This is an old black and white print, gelatin print, silver gelatin. I love these old photographs. And we've got a nice scan of this, and we're going to... Wreck House. Wow, that was one of the first things I saw when I got to Newfoundland. This is the old Wreck House in the location the way it is now. That's what Wreck House looks like now from the parking lot. The building is long gone. This is when I park up there. First place I go when we get to Newfoundland is stop at Wreck House, camp out overnight. And we're going to uh, keep on doing scans. But if there's enough interest, I'll also make some darkroom prints and, on silver gelatin paper, and we'll see how that turns out. So this is really good for me. I'm like 75 years old, and I'm looking back at my life. It's like some things I wouldn't remember if it wasn't on film. So I hope you enjoy this video, and I hope that Windows 11 isn't the end of an era and that I can keep on doing this. Maybe they'll come out with a Windows 11 uh, software that'll work with the Epson scanner, but I don't know. Otherwise, I'll just keep using Windows 10 in this office right here. Thanks for visiting. Come on back again real soon.